All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of This Week in Charts via Carnivore Trades and Wall Street for Main Street. Starting off with the S&P 500, you can see we had a, another follow-through week here, adding to the rally from the week before, lots of short covering and kind of just some continuation going on this week. You know, I, I think last week I said that, uh, you know, we might pull back into this area here, the mid to low 430s, and then we could possibly get up to 450 to 455. Well, that was clearly not the case as we essentially just pushed right through and it just goes to show how many shorts were really out there because um, a lot of them got squeezed up this week and you know we are getting a little short term overbought right now but it got up to that 453 handle nonetheless so essentially went to my price target I uh, just thought we would pull back a little bit before then um, but obviously that wasn't the case and we got up basically sitting right underneath that 100 moving average now we are a little short term overbought we are into some resistance you get the, the sense that the market market participants are essentially just waiting for a pullback. Um, we know the market's a little overbought here and everyone's kind of waiting to see when that pullback is going to happen. And the bears are essentially looking to short here and expecting another leg down. As far as that is concerned, I wouldn't rule out another leg down here. You know, anything can happen. But we, we just came from, you know, I showed you that bull bear ratio. Um, I can flip it up uh, right here really fast. But again, this is the updated one here for, for this week. But we got that crossover and, you know, we're not really, we're not even back above 40 yet. Um, so while sentiment is getting a little bit uh, more bullish here on the street, you know, you can't go from that, that condition to, you know, essentially, you can't go from fear to euphoria in a matter of two weeks, um, or really a week and a half. So I think that, the, you know, if I had to make a guess, we probably... And maybe we have some range bound chop and I wouldn't even rule rule out, you know, a pullback or a consolidation and, you know, possibly a move up here. Um, th these pivots right now are, are very major resistance, though, on the spider. So I don't think we can get up there just yet. But then, you know, again, I do expect another leg down in this market at some point this year. But I just don't think conditions quite favor it just yet uh, overall. But that doesn't mean it can't happen. You know, we have major geopolitical events going on, so that can always throw a wrench into things. You know, my, my thing is, though, if, if we did have a, a major reaction and went down to the lows, we would immediately get back into um, a situation where there's a ton of shorts back in the market again. So we'd be right back to square one and we'd probably have another short squeeze. But anyways, you know, that's just kind of what we're looking at here. Um, you know, again, doesn't mean we can't go lower, but ultimately, I think the market is at least for the next couple of weeks, probably OK. Anyways, let's flip over here. Uh, we'll talk about the Russell. So Russell holding up, I'll put my trend lines back on here. Also holding up okay. It's starting to flag a little bit. This should get up to 210, maybe 212 at the most. Um, that's really all the upside I see in it at the moment. Um, the weekly time frame is not very good looking on the Russell, though. Um, you are inside of this big red candle and you're kind of going sideways here. So I never like to see that when that happens. But in the meantime, it's holding up okay. Dow via the diamond here. This has upside to you know maybe the 355 handle. Um, if we get a push up, but again, it's going to need to do some backhand filling, but I don't see any real problems there on the Dow either. Same thing with the triple Qs. Um, this one she has a little bit upside to about 363 or so. Again, may need to do some more chopping or so, but, you know, triple Q is holding up okay. And, you know, inside of tech, you know, take a look at Apple. I mean, just look at this. If this isn't a short squeeze and then probably, you know, a short squeeze at the bottom and now a gamma squeeze at the top. I mean, I don't know what is. Uh, nine days in a row up. I mean, just ridiculous move here for a company of that size. Same thing with Tesla here, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days up in a row. And then a little micro pause on uh, Friday. Uh, NVIDIA got a very powerful move here on, on Thursday. So that came way off the lows. And even Facebook, you know, a lot of shorts, you know, finally covering. And Facebook, you know, basically went from 185 to 220 in a matter of two weeks. So a lot of, you know, a lot of short covering going on in the NASDAQ right now. And a lot of these beaten down names are finally uh, getting some type of a bid. Uh, semiconductors did close above the daily 200 moving average. You know, this was a, you know, a minor resistance area, but you know, you got to close above that Thursday. Didn't confirm it Friday. However, we did confirm a weekly close above the 50 MA on, on the semi. So that is a positive there. Um, IGV, as well, kind of moving up here, flagging. This is going to have pretty good resistance around 360 if it can get up there. Uh, Dow Transports, I really like this chart pattern. This is a really nice sharp bull flag here. Nice and tight, upright, right angle, uh, above all the moving averages. And I talked about this um, last week and really been talking about it all week. But 
got that little inverse head and shoulders that got a target of about 17k so we should look that uh, look to that to get up there uh, at some point in the near future all right so yields moving higher again overbought but again nothing to say they can't move higher here they basically get up to that 2.5 handle and just what a power move here on, on the 10-year Treasury yield. Now, it is getting really overbought. I think bonds get some type of a bid here. It's just it's just extended. Um, and, you know, there could be a short squeeze in bonds if that does happen. But I still have, you know, nothing's changed about my numbers here. I, you know, I said a while ago that 10 or a 30-year could get up to 2.8, possibly 3. And that's still in the, that's still in the cards. I still believe that. Um doesn't mean it goes up there in a straight line. You know, maybe it has to do some backing and filling first, but um, I don't see any reason why the 30-year can't get up there. Ultimately, you know, bonds probably will get a bid here at some point, but, you know, the yields are just really ripping right now. And it's it's um, it's been a pretty remarkable trade. And all the, uh, the uh, genius uh, bond fund managers that were telling you to buy bonds for the last two years are, are looking pretty foolish right now. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Anyways... Uh, high yield debt. So this is a problem for the market. So if you're, if this is, if there's a bear case to be made, this is it right here. So you lost that 20 moving average. You know, could never really confirm above it to begin with, but got rejected here. A little micro inside bar, and then a dip down. Now it's not dead in the water just yet. It's not. You know, it still has time to make a higher low. Um, but this is kind of the canary in the coal mine. So you know, the market may be able to climb the wall of worry, but at some point, this will certainly matter. All right, um, XLF holding up okay, kind of flagging on the daily. Same thing with XBD. Again, we got to watch that yield curve um, if it's close to an inversion. So uh, watch out for that. Um, but fins seem to be holding up okay for now, so we'll, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. XLE is starting to get a little stretched here. I've been talking about this um, really earlier this week. You know, we're over 50% extended from the 20-month moving average. That's That's just a huge move there. And yeah, I get, you know, there's great fundamentals for a lot of these companies with the oil price right now, but, you know, th this is getting really overbought here. Um, and it doesn't mean the, the prices can't stay elevated for some time, but um, to expect that, to expect it to continue this this type of an angle move, you know, basically going from 52 to 80 on, on an ETF in, you know, two months, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. Um, and I just don't think it's, I don't know how much longer it can be sustainable for, um, at least at least at this, you know, current trajectory. Um, XOP, interestingly enough, that's the wrong one. There we go. XOP is into the 100-month uh, moving average, and you do have a lot of resistance coming into here with this red bar. Um, however, the OIH is actually, you know, I actually like this pattern. You know, went up here, consolidated, got through that 50-month moving average, and on the weekly, you're above all the moving averages, and Nice consolidation and pushing through that 200. So OIH is actually holding up okay. Um, XOP is a little bit weaker, and XLE to me just looks really stretched. That's the only issue I have with it. Uh, crude, you know, I said that was going back to 116. We got up there. We actually just um, closed out UCO, which is two times long oil, for 27%. Um, if you guys are interested in swing trading, come find me on Carnivore Trades. Uh, we just did a live webinar today, and also um, just starting to offer uh, coaching services as well. But um, absolutely easy easy money trade here uh, we bought right into this uh, 50 moving average right above that and closed that out for 27 percent. but this volatility has been awesome for swing trading this year all right so moving on here let's talk about some of these other commodities so nickel again you know rules changes going on here so we talked about the parabolic move you came down back tested this 2000 handle and it's getting a nice bid off of that getting a nice bounce but you know they're, they're coming in with the exchanges and so on they're coming in with rules changes trying to limit limit up and uh put restrictions on it a lot of this feels very 2018 ask you know take a look at aluminum here um just crazy volatility wheat and uh, even uranium still powering higher here but you know it feels very 2018 asking what i mean by that is in January of 2018, a bunch of hedge funds and uh, family offices complained essentially that you know the vol products VXX, UVXY were too much had too much uh, leverage, so they got them all nerfed down. Um, you know, there's the rules changes going on all the time, and this is really no different. Um, but it definitely gives me some kind of 2018 type vibes where you know you're essentially hearing complaining and whining, um, you know, from the big money because they can't get their way. But um, you know. They make the rules and we just follow them, I guess. But crazy, crazy moves in some of these commodities here. 
Um, speaking of, so let's take a look at Nat Gas. Um, this nice breakout. So we've got a little triangular pattern going on here. And nice push through that. Um, I was looking to go along this. I was just waiting for a little bit more consolidation. We just didn't get it. Price took off a little bit sooner than I thought. But nice move there. Huge positives. You closed above this red bar high here. So that's a major positive. Didn't quite get above the, I don't believe, yeah, just closed below this tail high on the weekly. But, you know, a nice power move there on that gas. You know, maybe it does some consolidation here and nothing to say it can't get back up to six, maybe 650. So uh, power move there on that gas on the weekly time frame and a nice breakout. Um, dollar index, really kind of nothing changed really from last week, just kind of hugging trend here, hugging the 20 moving average. Uh, it's really in the resistance here on the weekly and monthly time frames. You see all that chop up there. Nothing wrong with the technical position. It just needs to do a lot of work really to get through that. Um, gold. So here's the only levels that we really need to concern ourselves with this week. So the yellow line here is that monthly inside bar that I've been talking about for quite some time here. We close above that um, by Thursday. That negates this inside bar. We close above yeah, just bear with me. There we go. Close above 1962.50 by Thursday. We have a quarterly negation of this red bar. So that would be a humongously bullish signal for gold. And at that point, it would be just a matter of time before it makes new all time highs. Uh, doesn't mean it'll go there immediately. You know, it may have to consolidate and so on and so forth. But that would be an enormous sign of strength. So we'll see if they smash it down. I'd be, I'm very interested to see where we close out the quarter and the month this week on gold. The positives here, GDX is holding up okay. Um, it's actually getting a better bounce than spot gold. So that tells you that spec money is, you know, um, coming into the market. You see the same thing on silver. So silver, you know, retracing pretty sharply. Got a decent bounce on Thursday. But you look at the SILJ. This is a nice, you know, above all the moving averages little test back test here and then kind of going sideways. This is not a bad pattern here on SALJ. So that could be telling us something, but we'll have to watch those uh, levels there. Uh, I believe Thursday is the last day of the month. So that's going to be key. All right. Platinum also kind of rolling over coming off the highs. Um, those China lockdowns really just uh, really just stopped the rally here in platinum and palladium. Um, big move down here in, in palladium and then kind of a bear pattern. This, this support is good though. This should hold up at least for now. Um, copper, Kind of a neutral week, but I would have liked to have seen a stronger close um, and getting above that 4.8 area. I knew it was going to test that area. I would have liked to have seen it close a little bit stronger on the week, but ultimately nothing terrible. We'll have to see what it does uh, next week by the end of the week. All right. Um, let's flip over to the coins here. All right. So, yeah, Bitcoin getting through this wedge pattern. We've been following this for a couple weeks now. And, um, you know, it's pushing through that right now. And, you know, not exactly a robust move just yet, but it's holding up. And, you know, again, this has been a good leading indicator, you know, Bitcoin, crypto in general is a good, has been a good leading indicator for the equity markets in terms of risk on risk off. And we're going to continue to ride that until, you know, it proves us otherwise. But, you know, if it can sustain above this wedge pattern, it can go test this trend line. And I do not expect it to get through that. Um, but for right now, it's holding up okay. Ether also got through this wedge here. We talked about that last week. Um, stalling out at that 3,200 area. This could get up to maybe 33 in the near term, uh, maybe 34. But um, nice little, nice little counter trend pop. Little ABC up there on Ether. All right, all together. Slipping back over to the spiders again. You know, short term overbought. Could we have a major reaction off this level? It's possible, but volume's been declining. Um, and I just don't think the conditions right now favor a huge uh, or at least another leg lower, at least not a significant one. Um, I think we'll get that. But, you know, it's probably going to take a little bit of time. You know, again, we had we went from max bearish sentiment um, two weeks ago to, you know, ripping your face off, you know, rip your face off rally. But again, it takes time for that sort of sentiment and the, the market mechanics to work themselves out. But, you know, in any case, I wouldn't rule anything out in this climate, in this environment with the uh, geopolitical issues going on. That said, come find me on carnivoretrades.com. Come sign up for Jason's Patreon. Give the video a like, subscribe, etc. And I'll, I'll talk to you all next week.